I think the latest decision is based upon the history of this current council and the situation in city government. Right now, we have a city government that's not working in the best interest of the taxpayers. First and foremost, we have a flawed city council. The council is making decisions based upon political bias rather than service to the public or what is in the best interest of the public. Secondly, um, we have a um, difficult situation with a flawed charter. The charter has contradictory statements in it that uh, encourage lawsuits because there's always an interpretation of one section as opposed to another section. Another example would be in terms of term limits. The council, the way term limits was written, it states it's either three terms or the greater of 12 years. So that's contradictory and it leaves it open to interpretation. But first and foremost, this city council, unlike many other city councils, has based all of their decisions or virtually all of the important decisions based upon political bias. Now what that's done is it has paralyzed public service and it has also served to paralyze the officials that have to carry out public service. So for example, the city council was given, it must be three years ago now, to vote on a proposal for a new town center which would generate two and a half million dollars of new tax revenue, a quarter of a billion dollars of new uh, development in the city and a thousand or more jobs, some construction and what have you. They have still not voted on that. They've chosen just to table it and put it aside. In addition to that, I had some calls yesterday from angry Warren residents. One resident was angry because uh, we had uh, a big uh, opiate settlement and we, I had sent over how I wanted the money to be distributed to various uh, groups. And instead of the council doing that, they tabled it and they still haven't distributed it. So one lady sent me an angry letter and said, I think the mayor lied to us because we still hadn't received that money. And I said, no, ma'am, I don't lie, but the city council has refused to act on this. There's another example. I had a lady that was really unhappy with what's going on in our parks. They're not, they need to be fixed up, whether it be our splash pad or our regular parks. And again, the council was given millions of dollars to improve our parks, and instead they chose not to improve the parks. Now we get to the council, ultimately they decided to put forth term limits on me even though no citizens had come forward with term limits and term limits had already been stated that it would be five terms for me. The voters in I think 2016 did that. So they put an unclear ballot proposal on that said this is just going to make things equal. They did, they, this is going to be fair for everybody. They did not say that the ballot proposal was targeted at one person, Jim Fouts, Mayor Warren. They didn't say that. And so they put it on a crowded presidential election ballot where people were busy with Trump versus Biden and John James versus uh, the Democratic candidate and what have you. And the bottom line is that it got lost and people didn't know whether they voted for it or not. They didn't know it had anything to do with me. So then, um, I took the complaint, I, I actually didn't take it, I got the, uh, the several, we got a legal opinion from the city attorney that stated this term limits wouldn't affect me. Then the election commission voted to put me on, I was on the ballot. Well the city council decided they didn't like that, they wanted to eliminate me as a comp competition for the election, so they challenged it and they went before the circuit court. The circuit court judge Toya had oral arguments, oral hearings. And in it, the council attorney was unable to convince the judge that the proposal was clear. He couldn't explain where retroactivity was, so the judge ruled I was on the ballot. Well, the council wasn't satisfied with that, so they appealed it to the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals decided after a long delay that they would not take oral arguments, even though the circuit court judge, and they said, well, we like term limits, so don't we care what he did. Then we appealed it to the state Supreme Court, and they said, we don't want to hear it either. So then it was appealed to the federal judge who is formerly from Macomb County and his wife, of course, is on the Court of Appeals. And uh, there, the judge said, I am 95% certain, this was less than two weeks ago, 
that you're going to have oral arguments. And then suddenly, at the beginning of this week, he said, nah, I don't want oral arguments. So the interesting pattern is that where a judge hears this case, it's ruled that Jim Fouts has a right to be in the ballot. But when they don't have oral arguments, then they all fall in place. Now, why is it that the Michigan State Court of Appeals, the Michigan State Supreme Court, and the federal district court all chose not to have oral arguments. I feel that in itself denies me my First Amendment right, the right of free speech, or to be represented by someone that can argue the case, and it also denies me due process. So that's why we're appealing it, because the issue is on constitutional rights. The issue is on the clarity of the ballot. It has nothing whatsoever to do with term limits. It's about clarity and constitutional rights. Well, that's a big question. I raise that to all of the courts. I say, why wouldn't you allow me to pursue my First Amendment rights and hear me out? Because the only judge that heard me out was Judge Toya in the Macomb County Circuit Court. And everybody who was there, almost everybody except maybe a friend of the council, saw that the council attorney, Jeff Schroeder, fell apart. He couldn't answer the questions. He was shaking and everything. And so the judge said, you can't explain where the retroactivity is. It's, it's clear that this proposal is not clear, and therefore Jim Fouts will be in the ballot. So why is it the rest of the judges, the rest of the courts, are afraid to hear me out? My question is, give me my day in court. Give me an opportunity to have an argument in front of you. Then if you hear all of the facts and you determine that you're going to rule the same way, that's fine. But so far, They've refused to hear the facts. They refused to have oral arguments. The only judge, Judge Toria, that did ruled in my favor. So I feel I've been denied my First Amendment rights. I feel I've been denied my due process in the, in the Fifth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment. So we are going to appeal on the basis that none of the courts have answered the question whether my constitutional rights have been denied and whether or not this ballot proposal was clear and not a targeted proposal, that the basic issue is it's not clear when it comes to retroactivity. So it wasn't written right. And maybe it wasn't written right because they purposely didn't want the voters to know that it would only affect Jim Fouts. So that's an important question. I'm hopeful, but I never know anymore because this council has a law firm in Oakland County that apparently is able to have strong influence in the court circuit. I don't know why or what, but I don't know whether that's going to be the case or not. And by the way, it's interesting to also note that Warren is the only city in Macomb County to have term limits, the only city in the metro area, maybe except one, to have term limits too. And term limits was not started by the voters of Warren in a petition. It was started by the city council, and it was aimed at Jim Fouts, no one else. So that's kind of where it's at. We'll see where it goes. I am, I would also add this, that all of our polls have shown that I have a strong 70 plus point percentage support of the people. Wherever I go, people want to support me. They want to be able to vote for me. And in the city primary, roughly about a month ago, every candidate that I endorsed won the primary. So the person who will replace me, George Demas, I endorsed him. He came in first and the at-large candidates and everybody else came in. So clearly, the voters are on my side, and they want someone who will represent their interests rather than the narrow-minded interest of the political bias of this current city council, which has encouraged lots of lawsuits and chaos and conflict. But the most important thing is they have developed into paralysis in government, recreation, opiate settlement. A whole host of other things have not been approved or even disapproved. They just have refused to vote on them. Are you willing to fight this all the way to the Supreme Court if you have to? If we can go as far as the Supreme Court, I would do that because I know that we are correct. I know that this should be heard in a fair, objective, and unbiased vote. So far, the courts, for whatever reason, have decided they don't want to hear me out. So they have denied me my right to speak before the court. 
That, to me, is a subtle political bias. No, I don't know why they're doing it or what have you, but all they have to do is say, we will hear you out and then I will move forward. Whether it comes one way or another, I'm willing to do that, but I think I have a right to have my speech heard in public before a court. Meaning oral arguments, right? My oral arguments, yeah, right. Well, I would like to have gone out with a positive council, not a council that bases all their decisions on political bias and retribution and retaliation and lawsuits. I'd like to have a council that would have a collaborative and cooperative relationship with me so that I can accomplish some things for the citizens like, you know, fixing up a lot of things that need to be taken care of, whether it be uh, the recreation department, whether it be the town center, whether it be work on preventing uh, uh, flooding and things of that nature. There's a whole host of things I'd like to do, but frankly, this city council has paralyzed city government. They basically have been disrespectful to my department heads, and they, most of their decisions have been an indecision. They just say, we won't hear it, or we'll table it, and then they never have a committee meeting, and it never comes out. So we have profound paralysis in city government. Our citizens aren't being served well because the city council makes a decision based on political bias rather than public service. And you don't want to address any idea of running for office anywhere else, right? Uh, no, I, uh, that's not in my mind. I, my life and my wife is the job of being the mayor of Warren. I enjoy it. I wake up and I go jogging and I'm thinking about things. And when I go home at night, I jog again and I think again. I enjoy this job and I see this job as a great opportunity to do good for the people of Warren. But my ability to do good is limited by the paralysis that political bias on the behalf of the city council currently has overtaken the city and has been a dark cloud on the city for four years.